Good evening. We are on the 13th of September, Tuesday, 2022. I'm going to be sharing with you the Bible in one year. And the day that I'll be recording is day 139. The readings will be from the book of 2 Samuel, chapters 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10 and Psalm 138 and the Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 verses 1 to 35 In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen Angel of God, my guardian dear to whom his love commits me here, ever this night be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel 2 Samuel chapter 7 and the title is God's Covenant with David. Now when the king dwelt in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies round about. The king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From the name, the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies, Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled 
and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom for ever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. When he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for ever before me. Your throne shall be established for ever. In accordance with all these words and in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. The next title is David's Prayer. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house, that thou hast brought me thus far? And yet, this was a small thing in thy eyes, O Lord God. Thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast shown me future generations, O Lord God. And what more can David say to thee? For thou knowest thy servant, O Lord God, because of thy promise, and according to thy own heart, thou hast wrought all this greatness to make thy servant know it. Therefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, and there is no God besides thee. According to all that we have heard with our ears, what other nation on earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem, to be his people, making himself a name, and doing for them great and terrible things, by driving out before his people a nation and its gods, and thou didst establish for thyself thy people Israel to be thy people for ever. And thou, O Lord, didst become their God, and now, O Lord God, confirm for ever the word which thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house and do as thou hast spoken and thy name will be magnified for ever saying the Lord of hosts is God over Israel and the house of thy servant David will be established before thee for thou, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, hast made this revelation to thy servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore thy servant has found courage to pray this prayer to thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art God. And thy words are true. And thou hast promised this good thing to thy servant. Now therefore, may it please thee to bless the house of thy servant 
that it may continue for ever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken. And with thy blessing shall the house of thy servant be blessed for ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 8, and the title is David's Wars. After this, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Meth Egam Ma out of the hand of the Philistines. And he defeated Moab and measured them with a line, making them lie down on the ground. Two lines he measured to be put to death and one full line to be spared. And the Moabites became servants to David and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadad Dezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to restore his power at the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand foot soldiers. And David ham hamstrung all the chariot horses, but left enough for a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help had a dead Zer, king of Zobah, David slew 22,000 men of the Syrians. Then David put gar garrisons in Aram of Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought tribute. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold, which were carried by the servants of Hadadzeza, and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Bero Thai, cities of Hadadzeza, King David took very much bronze. When Toy King of Hamath heard that David had defeated the whole army of Hadadizer, Tobai Toyai sent his son Joram to King David to greet him and to congratulate him because he had fought against Hadadizer and de defeated him for Hadadizer had often been at war with Toei, and Joram brought with him articles of silver, of gold, and of bronze. These also King David dedicated to the Lord, together with the silver and gold, which he dedicated from all the nations he subdued, from Edom, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines, Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadzezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. And David won a name for himself. When he returned, he slew 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons. And all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord gave victory to David wherever he went. The next title is David's Officers. 
So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered justice and equity to all his people. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahulud, was recorder, and Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were priests, and Seraiah was secretary, and Beniah, the son of Jehoada, was over the Chethahites and Pelethites, and David's sons were priests. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 9, and the title is David's Kindness to Mephibosheth. And David said, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. And they called him to David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, Your servant is he. And the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God to him? Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. The king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, He is in the house of Mashir, the son of Amiel at Lodibar. Then King David sent and brought him from the house of Mashir, the son of Amiel at Lodabar. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. And David said to him, Do not fear, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land of Saul your father, and you shall eat at my table always. And he did obeisance and said, What is your servant that you should look upon a dead dog such as I? Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, All that belonged to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's son, and you and your sons and your servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce that your master's son may have bread to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so will your servant do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all who dwelt in Ziba's house became Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth's servants. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate always at the king's table. 
Now he was lame in both feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10. And the title? The Ammonites and Arameans are defeated. After this, the king of the Ammonites died, and Hanun his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will deal lovingly with Hanun the son of Nahash, as his father dealt loyally with me. So David sent by his servants to console him concerning his father. And David's servant came to the land of the Ammonites. But the princes of the Ammonites said to Hanun their lord, Do you think, because David has sent comforters to you, that he is honouring your father? Has not David sent his servants to you to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? So Hanun took David's servants and shaved off half the beard of each and cut off their garments in the middle at their hips and sent them away. When it was told David, he sent to meet them for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Remain at Jericho until your beards have grown and then return. When the Ammonites saw that they had become odious to David, the Ammonites sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobar, 20,000 foot soldiers, and the king of Ma'aka with a thousand men, and the men of Tob, 12,000 men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. And the Ammonites came out and drew up in battle array at the entrance of the gate and the Syrians of Zobar and of Rahob and the men of Tob and Maka were by themselves in the open country. When Joab saw that the battle was set against him, both in front and in the rear, he chose some of the picked men of Israel and arrayed them against the Syrians. The rest of his men he put in the charge of Abishai his brother and he arrayed them against the Ammonites. And he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage, and let us play the man for our people, and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what seems good to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near to battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the Ammonites saw that the Syrians fled, they likewise fled before Abishai and entered the city. Then Joab returned from fighting against the Ammonites and came to Jerusalem. But when the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered themselves together, and Hadadezer sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the Euphrates. And they came to Helam with Shobash, the commander of the army of Hadadezer, at their head. 
And when it was told, he gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan and came to Helam. And the Syrians arrayed themselves against David and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew of the Syrians the men of 700 chariots and 40,000 horsemen and wounded Shobash, the commander of their army, so that he died there. And when all the kings who were servants of Hadadezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and became subject to them. So the Syrians feared to help the Ammonites any more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I now have to turn over and find the psalm. So, a reading from Psalm 138 and the title is Thanksgiving and Praise. Okay. A reading from Psalm 138. I give thee thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing thy praise. I bow down toward thy holy temple and give thanks to thy name for thy steadfast love and thy faithfulness for thou hast exalted above everything thy name and thy word. On the day I called, thou didst answer me my strength of soul thou didst increase. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord. For they have heard the words of thy mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou dost preserve my life. Thou dost stretch out thy hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. The steadfast love, O Lord, endures for ever. Do not forsake the work of thy hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've now got to turn the pages again for the gospel. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 and um, the title is The Resurrection of Jesus But on the first day of the week at early dawn they went to the tomb taking the spices which they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, 
Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise and they remembered his words and returning from the tomb they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, wondering at what had happened. The next title the walk to Emmaus. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they st stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleophas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They went at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses, and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. 
So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them who said, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. Thank you so much for listening. Um, one step <laughs> ahead with the Bible now but I'm still a long way behind.